Hi, I'm Peter Hart. Welcome back to FAIR TV. For some in the media, the saga of NSA whistleblower Edward Snowden has become a story about the reporter who broke the story in the first place, Guardian columnist Glenn Greenwald, and whether or not Greenwald is involved in a crime. Here's NBC's David Gregory. To the extent that you have aided and abetted Snowden, even in his current movements, why shouldn't you, Mr. Greenwald, be charged with a crime? Now, as you might imagine, Greenwald took issue with a journalist asking that of another journalist. Gregory protested that he was just asking a question, but the preface here, to the extent you have aided and abetted, sure sounds like it assumes Greenwald is guilty of a crime. And it wasn't just David Gregory. Here's Andrew Ross Sorkin of the New York Times speaking on CNBC. I told you this in the, the green room. I would arrest him, and now I almost arrest uh, Glenn Greenwald, who's the, the, the journalist, who seems to be out there. Almost, he wants to help him get to Ecuador or whatever. Whatever is right. Sorkin apologized, or almost apologized, if you will, for putting it that way, though what he meant to say wasn't entirely clear. These comments along with subsequent stories delving into Greenwald's personal life, are making it pretty clear that some journalists want to show that Glenn Greenwald isn't one of them, which, of course, he's not. There's a new phase in the Snowden saga. Anonymous government officials are going to compliant media outlets to complain that Snowden has made it easier for terrorists to evade capture. A June 25th piece in the Washington Post granted one U.S. official anonymity to claim that Snowden's leaks are helping terrorists. Several terrorist groups in various regions of the world have begun to change their method of communication. And CNN Pentagon reporter Barbara Starr sounded the same warning. Now U.S. officials say other terrorist groups are reacting to these disclosures by Snowden and very quickly also changing their communications methods. And then there was this from the Associated Press, a report that dramatically claimed that U.S. intelligence was scrambling to salvage terrorist surveillance. The AP went to more unnamed sources to conclude that members of virtually every terrorist group, including core al-Qaeda members, are attempting to change how they communicate based on what they are reading in the media. So we have secret official sources telling us about a secret program and how a whistleblower is giving terrorists an advantage. A little more skepticism is in order. And finally, apparently it's not too early to start writing about the 2016 presidential election. The prospect of former Florida Governor Jeb Bush running had Time Magazine's John Meacham so excited he wrote a column about it, a column that curiously situates Jeb in a family that doesn't sound a lot like the Bushes. Jeb long ago internalized and then lived out his family's guiding precepts. Bushes move to new parts of the country. They work hard. They learn from their mistakes, particularly from failed campaigns. And they never, ever give up. Was John Meacham conscious during the George W. Bush presidency? Admitting mistakes. Now, Bush was asked about that in 2004, and here's what happened. After 9-11, what would your biggest mistake be, would you say, and what lessons have you learned from it? Mm. I wish you'd have given me this written question ahead of time so I could plan for it. Uh, John, I'm sure historians will look back and say, gosh, he could have done it better this way or that way. Well, that's enough of that. Meacham tells us that it's the public that loves the Bushes. We have an affinity for brand names. The Bushes are related products that most Americans recognize and have chosen on three of the four occasions they've been on offer. You know, the American people didn't actually choose George W. Bush in the year 2000. He lost the popular vote by a little over half a million. The Supreme Court chose him. It was kind of a big deal at the time. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.